Hello everyone and welcome to my Royal Family Today Update channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Kate writes a personal message to thank Children's Hospices for providing life-changing care. The Princess of Wales, as patron of East Anglian Children's Hospices, wrote a letter to the organization this week to celebrate the start of Children's Hospices Week. Kate, Princess of Wales, lauded the life-changing care provided by Children's Hospices in a poignant letter, praising the shining light they provide to families at tough times. The letter was written in honor of Children's Hospices Week, which runs from June 19 to June 25. The King is the patron of the organization East Anglian Children's Hospices, each. Every year, Children's Hospices Week honors the work of children's hospices and palliative care services throughout the UK, as well as the very ill children and families who are helped. Each strives to raise awareness and support for sick children and their families across the east of England, including Kate and Prince William's country residence in Norfolk Amher Hall. As patron of East Anglia's Children's Hospices, I'd have been privileged to see firsthand the incredible way hospices help families and allow children to be children, the princess wrote in her letter. During Children's Hospice Week, all hospices will be doing what they do every day, delivering vital specialist care, and whether that is assisting in the facilitation of a day at the beach for children to feel the sand between their toes, engaging young people in therapeutic music activities, or having a fun painting session to create special moments and memories. The teams supporting these families regularly go above and beyond to make a difference in their lives, no matter what. On behalf of parents and caregivers across the country, I'd like to thank everyone at Children's Hospices. You are a bright light in the darkness for so many families, and your efforts are not in vain. Kate impressed the crowds at Trooping the Color on Saturday in a magnificent green Andrew Gian outfit, which she accessorized with a matching hat and jewelry Prince from William's the late five-year initiative to combat homelessness has been lauded. William was applauded after stating his desire to change views and revealing that he will speak to his children, Prince George, 9, Princess Charlotte, 8, and Prince Louis, 5, about individuals sitting outside supermarkets. On Sunday, Prince William received international acclaim for his audacious crusade to abolish homelessness. His five-year plan includes the construction of dwellings on royal property. Homeless organizations praise the Prince of Wales for pledging to address the issue, which claims hundreds of lives each year. William stated his desire to change views and indicated that he will discuss people sitting outside supermarkets with his children, Prince George, 9, Princess Charlotte, 8, and Prince Louis, 5. He believes that his big project would target younger victims, help people get off the streets, and build social homes on his Duchy of Cornwall estate. The heir to the throne is expected to provide details of what he thinks will be a long-term answer to the sticking plaster strategy to dealing with uncomfortable sleeping. William talked ahead of his 41st birthday on Wednesday, which marks 30 years since his mother, Princess Diana, transported him to a London shelter when he was 11 years old. We can do it, he remarked. This challenge is not insurmountable. If anyone becomes homeless, tell them, okay, here's the way back, here's the pathway. It's terrifying, but I'm genuinely looking forward to it. I've been waiting for the right time to do this. Prince William is right to be horrified by rising homelessness and right to try to bring people together to solve the root causes, said Polly Neat, chief executive of Shelter. The housing crisis is destroying lives across the country. Access to a safe home is as important as access to education or health care. Social housing is the only type of housing that is truly affordable. That is why it was encouraging to see Prince Charles advocating social housing. They are the only method to permanently alleviate homelessness and the housing crisis. Seo Bacon, chief executive of Centerpoint, one of William's two homeless organizations, claimed the royal spent many years talking to people who had nowhere to reside. I am sure it is those bonds formed over many years that are driving him on, he continued. We have reached a tipping point in terms of youth homelessness, so we are extremely fortunate to have the Prince of Wales support to help us change course. We need momentum if we are to end youth homelessness. Crisis CEO Matt Downey concurred, saying, Prince William is correct. We can put an end to homelessness, 
for far too long it has been considered that this problem is either too impossible to solve or that we should accept it as a society. Crisis has never believed that, and we fully support Prince William's determination to permanently end homelessness. Homelessness is complex and very difficult to end without fixing the wider problems with housing and social welfare, said Anna Clark, director of policy at the Housing Forum. However, it's great to see Prince William thinking about how to deal with it, she continued. Property expert Peter Bill questioned why the matter was being addressed by the future king rather than the current government. Some may wonder why William, rather than the government, is launching a large homelessness project, he tweeted. Some would argue that it's because neither party has cared in decades. The announcement of William's endeavor came as Buckingham Palace shared Father's Day photos of him with his children. Photographer Millie Pilkington captured the images on the Windsor estate. When I left this morning, one of the things I was thinking was, when is the right time to bring George, Charlotte, or Louis to a homeless organization? He explained, they will undoubtedly be exposed to it if I can balance it with their schooling. We discuss about what we see on the way to school. When we were in London, we saw people sitting outside supermarkets all the time. Why are they there? I'd ask the kids. What exactly is going on? It's in everyone's best interests, and it's the correct thing to do, to expose the youngsters so they can comprehend. That they grow up knowing that some of us are very fortunate, and that some of us need a little help. The Royal Foundation will handle William's campaign. According to charities, the number of 16 to 24-year-olds without a place to live increased to 122,000 last year. On the 130,000-acre Duchy of Cornwall, the prince will begin with a Keep small social housing project. At the Garter Day service, Kate and Sophie battle the wind. The royal women's gorgeous attire were ruined by the windy circumstances at the Order of the Garter this afternoon. Kate, Princess of Wales, and Sophie, Duchess of Edinburgh, had to contend with strong winds this afternoon, which threatened to lift their caps. The royal couple wore magnificent gowns to the annual Order of the Garter event at Windsor Castle, but they had to hold on to their hats to keep them from flying away in the wind. Other royal ladies were also seen clutching their hats tightly as gusting gusts whipped around the grounds of the old castle. Kate is wearing her Alessandra Rich polka dot dress for the second time this afternoon. She accessorized with a matching black and white polka dot fascinator and white shoes with a black toe by Philip Treacy. Sophie, on the other hand, chose a lovely summery Amelia Wickstead dress from the designer's current collection. She was carrying a bright pink pashmina, which she probably would use as a shawl if she felt cold, and a cream handbag to match her cream heels. Sophie accessorized her floral outfit with a stunning pink fascinator hat. King Charles and Queen Camilla led the royal procession ahead of the Order of the Garter service not long after Kate and Sophie arrived. They were shortly followed by other royal family members who are members of the order, including Prince William, Prince Edward, and Princess Anne. For the sacred ceremony, all knights wore splendid velvet gowns, gleaming insignia, and plumed hats. Because they have not been appointed to the Order of the Garter, Kate and Sophie did not join the parade or wear the formal gowns. They appeared to be in good spirits as they stood on the sidelines, with several photos showing them deep in discussion, laughing and smiling at one another. Appointees are chosen for their dedication to public service, however there are also honorary members of the Order from the United Kingdom and other countries. The appointments to the Order are made personally by the King, as Sovereign of the Garter. The Order of the Garter is Britain's oldest and most senior order of chivalry. Founded by King Edward IUI in 1348, about 700 years ago, the Order has 24 slots for knights and ladies' companions, and new appointments are solemnly invested in the Garter Throne Room by the King on Garter Day. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any updates.